Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate sub projects in Reaper for you. Sub projects are a nice and clean way to, for example, produce an album where each individual song is its own project with everything configured well and tidy in these projects. But in the end, you actually want to produce a CD that you can release as a physical disc. And for that matter, you want to put all those songs in the correct order into one big project without having to render every song out as an individual track. And sub-projects allow you to do exactly that. Another really common use case would be producing an audio drama where each individual scene is a project. And in the end, you actually want to combine those projects into one audio drama that you could release for whichever platform you like, maybe Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever. So let's take a deep dive into sub projects and get comfortable. There are a few common pitfalls with sub projects, and I'm well prepared to demonstrating them to you. Right now, I'm sitting in front of a project which just contains one track with nothing on it. One voice. One voice. So it's just a voice track with no item on it. One voice. I will now go ahead and create an item by just recording a little speech snippet. Let's arm first um. and record something. This is a test recording for demonstrating sub projects in Reaper. And now we will just play. I want beat one zero percent. This is a test recording for demonstrating sub projects in Reaper. Great works, right? So now we want to add a second track to the mix. Let's create one by pressing Ctrl T. Track name. Project. P -O -P -C -T. Name. And now we want to put a sub project onto this track. And there are two ways of doing this. Number one would just be inserting it as a media item which is the usual way. You press Alt-I, go into the Insert menu, hit the very first option, media file. which is Media File, or you can use the Insert key, the typical way. Reaper will just offer you to insert a project as a media item, which works just fine. However, if you know that you now want to create a new sub-project here, you can just do that by going into the Insert menu again, press Alt-I, and use the down arrow a few times. New mini item shift plus empty item E S M P T E Mixel C New sub project alt plus shift plus U N Or we press Alt Shift U. Now we will do this. Create new sub project dialog. And you will get the typical dialog for creating a new project. It's more or less the same dialog that you get if you just hit save as with small minor changes. But we will just create a new project here. Let's call it example e sub project. And hit enter. And let's see what happens. Reaper. Unsaved project project one slash two Reaper V7.06 registered to Tony Bath. Licensed for personal slash small business use. Equals end marker. So what happened? First thing that we noticed is Reaper got to work. It just said Reaper, so it was doing something. Now we're back in our initial project. Two project one item. One arm voice one item. But now our track project. Two project one item. Got an item, which is one example sub -project .rpp. our example sub project. Also, when we listen to what Reaper was just saying, we now know that there are two projects open. So we can press Control Tab to get into the new project. Example sub -project .rpp. This is great. In here we've got no tracks. No tracks. I would just quickly go and fetch one thing from my Media Explorer so that we have a sound that we can use for demonstrational purposes. Here we go. I've got one track now. 1 p.m. Blurry Dreams 071 item. And I will just play it for you. It was not marker. It was not marker. It was end marker. And one really important thing that you might have noticed already when creating the project, and that is definitely important, is NVDA telling us two things, two markers actually. One is the start marker equals start, and one is the end marker equals end. And you can skip to them by pressing one equals start marker and two equals end marker bar two on the keyboard. Now, here's a little deep dive for you what these do. You can always use them, they work wherever you place them in Reaper. They are really useful 
For example, if you have a project with more than just the track that you want to use when rendering out, so you can set equals start to where you want to start rendering and equals end where you want to end rendering, even if there's still more within the project. Reaper does this here automatically for us. But why is that? It is because in the original project, you know, the one that we can get to by just pressing Control tab Unsaved. because it's still open, we didn't select a time selection. So if you insert a new sub project in here without creating a time selection first, Reaper will assume that the new item, which you generated by creating a new sub project that way by pressing Alt Shift U, will be one bar in length. And by doing so, it will automatically create the markers within the sub project accordingly, so that you've got an idea of how long the item actually is in the master project, so that you don't lose track, that you don't run into a situation where you actually create a nice sound in your sub project, but you forgot that you've just actually got time for one bar in your master project because after this bar, something else is actually happening. So you create something, you render it out, you copy the project into your master project, and then you find out that the actual timing is right and your sound gets cut off after a bar, although you actually planned it for four bars, so you don't get anything of it. So Reaper will take the info that you gave it while creating the sub-project, which was Mm, this item's just going to be one bar length and copies that into the sub project. If you created a time selection first, which is, for example, four bars in length, then Reaper will also copy these information into the sub project and set the markers accordingly four bars apart so that you always know where the useful information starts and where it ends and what is actually required by the master project to work with. If you want to ignore this because you don't have a proper timing to actually keep because you're working with audio drama and you don't care how long the scenes actually are, then feel free to just delete the markers within the sub project. Control tab back. Example sub -project .rpp. Select the last one with two. Equals end marker. And hit delete. Marker deleted. And go to the first one. Equals start marker bar one. And delete. Marker deleted. Now everything within the sub project will be rendered out. So all of this will be used when copying it over into the master project but how do we do this it's rather easy we just press ctrl s let's see what happens we just save the project rendering to file examples of Ooh, what happened there it said rendering to file and then it was really fast and it closed so what reaper does as soon as it notices that the project file got updated, Reaper will internally render it out into a format that it can then use to place it into your master project. That is usually a step that gets more or less hidden from you. You don't need to care about this, actually. But in the end, Reaper will have to work with something and to save on RAM and CPU usage, it will always render sub projects out into a so called prox file, which then gets used when playing back the master project so that you don't have to render all the sub projects out. Imagine you've got an album with so many different songs, which all take up a really huge CPU range because you're loading several different orchestral instruments. And then imagine you want to load 12 of them at the same time. That's not going to happen, right? So Reaper will render the sub projects out as a prox file, which then gets loaded to the master project. But here's the thing now. Let's go back to the master project, control tab, Unsaved. and play and see what happens. This is a test recording for demonstrating sub projects in Reaper. Oh, our item is too short. But why is that? Yeah, it's because of the exact same reason. Because we didn't give it a time selection, it assumed that our item is going to be one bar in length. Even though our item is actually longer, because we removed the markers in the sub-project, the master project still thinks that we're just going to need one bar of sound. So it didn't adjust accordingly. Because imagine a situation in which you score a short film, you aren't actually allowed to create something that is longer than a bar in length because the movie maker intended you to just do that. So you're not allowed to cross this boundary. 
So Reaper doesn't automatically adjust the size whenever you change the item length that is the length of the subproject. But obviously you can do this by yourself if you want to. And this is done by selecting the item One example subproject .rpp. and pressing F4 to get to the actions list. And now we type reset -E -E -E. Space. item -E Space. and length. -E and now let's see what we get. List one list. Description. SWS. Reset item rate. Preserving length. Clear preserve pitch one of two. And the other one. Description. Zenekio slash SWS. Reset item length and media offset two of two. That is what we want. We hit that. Unset. And now we play again. This is the best recording for demonstrating subprojects in Reaper. So as you can hear, it's much longer. It just cuts off where the project actually ends. So the subprojects will not make the project longer than it actually is. Or to put it differently, the reset item length action that we just used will not make the project longer than it actually is. It will adjust to the longest item in the project, which currently is our recording that we've just done at the very beginning of this video. So our item will not get longer than that. So they are now of equal length. And that is fine. Now, some other things that you should know about. You can close subprojects. Just Control Tab Example. and press Control F4. Unsaved. That will just close the project. Two project one item. And it's still in here. How do you reopen it though? We select the item that is the project. One example subproject .rpp. And we press Alt Shift O. Reaper. Example subproject .rpp. Track view. It gets opened as a second project tab and we will get automatically moved into the project. 1 p.m. Blurry Dreams 071 item. So that is good to know. Let's shut it down again. Unsaved. And that is all there is to say about subprojects, at least for the very basics. It's now really, really useful. You can just combine multiple projects into one project if you want to without having to manually render everything out. It's also really important and Good to know that you get those markers start and end set automatically if you create a subproject from the master project and that you have to adjust the item length with the reset item length action whenever you change it because Reaper will not automatically adjust the item length depending on the item length within the subproject. But if you know all of that and accommodate for that, then you should be fine using subprojects in your future projects. I hope this information was useful to you. I hope it helped you a little bit further on your journey to becoming a great producer with the help of Reaper. And if you've got any questions or seek help from me personally, then feel free to ask away in the comment section below the video. I'm always happy to discuss things with you. And if you want to stay up to date and want to see whenever a new video comes out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you within my audience. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.